Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are in our shop in upstate New York. Behind me is an American Coop. It's a 6x12 footprint with a 4x6 end house. And what is special about this coop is this is our first American Coop that is tractor style. Now, if you're not familiar with tractor style, means basically what that means is really any chicken coop that can be moved around. Okay? A lot of people like the idea of having a coop that moves around so that if you cannot let your chickens free range, all right, and they got to stay inside the run 100% of the time, you can move that coop around to fresh grass, all right? Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest with you. Actually, I can't stand tractor coops. I'll be perfectly honest with you, and I'm going to explain why. Um, I am a huge fan of free ranging, and it is so much easier just to go up to your run door open up your run door or your automatic chicken door, whatever you have, let the chickens do the moving around, not the coop. The chickens will always be happier. Even if you moved your coop every single day, the chickens are going to be happier free ranging. Now I get it, especially if you're brand new to chickens, maybe you're brand new to thinking about getting chickens. Yes, we fall in love with our girls, they're our pets, we don't want anything to happen to them. One of the major downsides to letting your chickens free range is predation having a predator come in during the daytime like a hawk, maybe your neighbor's dog. It's a very real chance. You try to do everything you can to prevent that from ever happening. For me personally, I let my girls free range. I have to say 99% of our customers let their chickens free range. But if you're in that situation where you absolutely cannot let your chickens free range and you want a coop where you can move it around or you have the room to move it around, that's what this is for. Now your other option of course is Never let your chickens out of the run, never move in your coop, make sure they have everything inside that run that they need so they never get bored and that they're 100% happy. You can do that, but it's a lot more work. So either way, we'll get right to it. So again, this is an American coop, 6x12 footprint, 4x6 hen house in the back. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to move it up. I know we're on concrete, so this is hopefully the perfect situation. But I'm going to just move it up. I'm going to talk about what makes this unique for being a tractor. So... Um, now it is designed to be moved around in the uh, yard and one thing we've learned is it, it's definitely a heavy coop. They are I think about 1200 pounds, so right about there. I think. Now these right here are what we call our drop down predator apron. If you're not sure what a predator apron is, make sure you go watch one of those videos. Ingrid, bring it up right now. Maybe there's a link right here. Uh, check that out. But basically, this is what keeps animals from digging underneath. Now, now each apron is on hinges, and I have a special hook that locks shut, if you will, so it can't come unlocked. If you ever have one of these hooks, one of the things I like about them is if you ever want to kind of turn it off and just make it a regular hook, you can. But I like having that. So as you're moving around, this can't come undone and drop on you on accident. So we're going to go ahead and unhook that. Now I'm just going to drop this down. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to go on the other side if you want to follow me around. Now also notice all the drop down aprons, uh, all built out of pressure treated lumber. And another thing actually I want to show off, this is huge. Especially if you're thinking about building drop down aprons. You know, I definitely love a lot of the compliments we get from people that are thinking about building their own coop and they want to learn from us. Huge compliment. I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woodworker and I am a huge fan of joinery. And that's what can make or break anything that you're building out of wood. Let's, um, let's take a look right here. This might be a, the best example. This is what's called a half lap joinery. So what it is, is just a half lap, all right? And then you can see it, if you come around here, you can see it, all right? And that is pinned with four screws that are rated for pressure treated lumber. That way they don't corrode. And uh, we glue it together using Gorilla Glue which is a great glue, cures in the presence of moisture, it expands and it makes it extremely strong. So every single board has a half lap joint. So that is a very strong frame. Uh, also, you can see that we have them on the exterior rated T hinges right there. Also the torque screws, I think they're one and a half inch screws for the pressure treated lumber. Um, also, while it's up, we decided, you know, the Predator apron we usually do out of this uh, 16 gauge PVC coated 2 inch by 3 inch squares and we like that because typically your larger animals are going to try to dig underneath 
they're gonna be larger. And we want a little bit of a beefier piece of metal, um, a larger gauge, uh, if you will, metal. But also because one of the things I also can't stand about tractoring a coop or moving a coop around is unless you are on a golf course or just a football field, soccer field, whatever, have a perfect flat ground, you're always going to have a spot, especially the bigger the coop, where there's going to be a void, there's going to be a hole, you know, for the coop to sit right down nice and even. So we wanted to make sure that we had the half inch hardware cloth to prevent anything from like adult snakes um, to any other animals that could slip through a two inch by three inch. So no different than our run. So we backed it up with the same half inch hardware cloth that's PVC coated. All right, anyways, I'm gonna, oh actually no, we're gonna leave this up. So what we're gonna do now is take advantage of our dolly system. And when we get it all down, I'll show you what that looks like. But the other thing that I'm really, really proud about this design is we are big on looks. And we have played around with so many different ideas in the past of how to make a coupe tractor. Um, my personal favorite is just using 4x4 skids, if you will. Put them up underneath. That's actually how our personal coupe is. And I just move it around with the tractor, but not everyone has a tractor. So in this case, we got um, jacks that we have fabricated ourselves so that they don't have to go on the outside. They're actually going on the inside. And we had to modify them in order to do that. And one of them was to actually extend the handle to come through the framing here. Uh, so I think it's a nice clean look. And the only other thing we have showing are these half inch stainless steel bolts that are four and a half inch or six and a half inch long, I forget. But either way, I think it just looks really good. So here, here's what you do. Is I'm just gonna crank this and drop it down. And one of the things I have learned is you actually, it's not gonna probably be quicker with two people but one of the things I have learned is it's actually beneficial to do a little bit at a time. And one of the reasons why I'm leaving this up is um, so you have easy access to get in here. One of the things that you wouldn't want to do is be standing on the apron. So that's why I'm leaving it up. So you crank this down. So anyways, so that's the idea. So let's come around back here. The same thing here, just gonna crank these down. Yeah. All right, so now sitting down on the ground, I'm just gonna drop down the back apron. All right, so let's go to the front. Drop down the front apron. And it's really just that simple. Um, again, if you find it absolutely necessary, you got a tractor your coop around, and say you don't have a tractor, but if you got yourself and someone else, definitely easier with two people, but that's the idea. Now, a couple other things that you'll notice about this coop is because it's designed to move around, we reinforced every single corner. Okay, that just makes it a lot stronger. We don't want to put any more unneeded stress on the joinery, if you will. And then the other thing, because of those angles here, we made our run door. I actually, I like it. It's kind of fancy if we just put this angle right here. But everything else is the same. We can just hook this open. And actually, if you want to come in here, oh, what I want to show is the the, the back side of the uh, hand crank jacks. And again, they're just like the same jacks that you see on trailers. Each one is rated for 1,200 pounds. And yeah, those are four and a half inch stainless steel bolts. And we just bolted them to this board right here. And that's really it. But we did have to modify them. We had to move this bracket from this side, uh, take apart the handle, the gears. Just again, a lot of modifications to make it work or chicken coops. So the one thing I probably will do, and I still might even change out these ones, I'm not sure, is obviously the bigger the tire, especially pneumatic, it's gonna go over the ground easier. But that'd be probably mainly if you're by yourself. I think two people, you know, you're not gonna go through mud, you're not gonna go off-roading with it. But, you know, especially during summertime, also depends on where you are, the ground, you know, you want it as flat as possible you know it doesn't have to be perfectly level 
This is another example where being on the same plane is very, very important. And what I mean by that is having it where all four corners, when this coop comes down, it's making contact with the ground. So uh, again, we got some more um, brackets. Tractors in the past, what we've done is we've did our shepherd's hook and eye bolt trick right here with the ramp where you can take it off when you go to move it or we hook the cable down here up and over and you can just pull the cable to bring the ramp up so that it doesn't get caught into the ground do like a nose dive as you go to move it we decided to eliminate that step and just put this bar that goes across widthwise and then we're able to support the uh, ramp without having to do anything with it and also what that did here is they obviously gave us lateral support at the bottom uh, of the entire coop again to make it so that it can be moved around the other thing too when you're moving your coop around you don't want your chickens in here that can make it very difficult you take a chance on them getting injured so uh, it has the hen house door so that let's say you know maybe like late at night when the chickens are up there by themselves they can uh, be closed off so they don't come out when you go to move the coop around the other thing that's also the same as any other American are all the windows uh, and here's another big thing two big things that we have added to this coop um, <clears throat> for the record this has never been an issue but this client did point it out and I said you know I'm not gonna argue with you yes something could get in through there be extremely difficult um, but it was an area I definitely felt that you know this is how we got where we are today we just keep getting better by listening to suggestions and ideas that the customers have what she wanted was something that fills in this gap up underneath these ribs all right and believe it or not the only thing they make is foam and I said you know we can fill it in with foam but anything's gonna chew through that if they want to get through if something wants to get through that foam bad enough they can all right but what we did is on our CNC machine we cut off um, the siding to fit that profile tucked up underneath there and I like it a lot it is something that I'm not sold yet to incorporate with all the chicken coops because again it's never been an issue it is imperative especially with the American we want to keep the price down as much as possible the more we do the more the price goes up and then the other area too and it's underneath the ridge cap so what we did is we just put a, a ridge cap of half inch hardware cloth on if you will and then put the metal ridge cap on top of it and what I like about in this case the half inch hardware cloth is especially inside the hen house it's very very important that you let the hen house breathe that um, air as it warms up can exhaust out through the top so I like that a lot and again it's never been an issue knock on wood we don't ever want it to be an issue but she pointed out I said sure you know it's only gonna make us better and this is something we can definitely incorporate with all our coops without adding a lot of cost so if you got input on that please leave the comments down below I definitely would love to hear your questions or comments about that and I think that's it for inside here uh, everything else is the same the height the pitch of the roof uh, the other thing that I should point out what we were calling the American coop roofs they're gone they weren't horrible they're just they're a bear less material but they're a bear to install so we went back to making our standard roof where you have the purlins everything's notched out and you have your ridge cap up top and this is the way water is meant to shed off the roof so definitely want to point that out we got that overhang regular um, a cutch everything here is the same as any other American we got our windows if you want to hook them open just simply hook the jack chain on there like that got tons of ventilation all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the inside of the hen house now one thing I want to mention real quick is this coop has been designed for silkies and silkies are different if you're thinking about getting silkies do your homework people either love them or hate them me I just I'm in the middle I don't really care for them they don't work for me personally but we have definitely designed a lot of coops and made changes for silkies and there's one of the things that makes silkies very unique is their feathers are you'll notice they're very fluffy and they're just almost pointless they really are pointless they don't have the ability to be able to hop up on the higher tree branches if you will uh, because their wings are very much non-functional but anyways with that said um, one of the things we had to do to change with this coop is keep the roost bars down lower and the other thing too uh, here's our deep litter door when it comes time to clean out your hen house just drop this down just like a tailgate on a truck 
Anyways, um, we've decided to incorporate the sockets again. We have our own half inch hardware, or I'm sorry, our half inch high density polyethylene that's left over from the Carolina coupe. And we decided to start incorporating them again. So what's nice about these, if you have to clean out your roost bar, or you have to clean your roost bar, say once a week, once a month, whatever, um, you can just pop them out with no tools necessary, just like that. And you're, you know, to be honest with you, your roost bars should not get real dirty, uh, but they can. You know, the chickens are going to sleep on them at night. It's nothing you have to clean, I don't think, have to worry about, but some people are very adamant on making sure they have clean roost bars. So, just something there. Uh, you want to make sure that they're nice and tight and that they don't wobble. Uh, chickens and most birds, they don't like anything that moves. Other than that, if you take a look at the inside, you can see the other side of the egg hutch. That's where the girls will hop in. And we also drop their, what we call perch bar, down lower because the roost bars, which would normally be up here, uh, we've had to lower to here so that you can still get them out, keep the perch bar below the roost bar. Oh, and let's get a shot up on the inside. Uh, talking about that half inch hardware cloth again. And what we did is we used our uh, stainless steel staples, shot it down on top of the purlins, and then again put the ridge cap over top. So it still has plenty of ventilation. And you can see those rib fillers, the underside of the rib fillers, right there for the metal roof. You know, another thing I want to mention is you can definitely incorporate the high density polyethylene upgrade into this coupe. You know, everything else is the same. Really, the biggest difference is we made it so you can move it around. I definitely recommend making sure that um, you think long and hard about it. You know, this does cost extra. I believe it, believe it or not, I tried to talk the customer out of it. Uh, she's brand new to chickens, she's getting silkies. But at the end of the day, here's another example. You know, we'll do what you want. Um, yes, princess, come on over. What do you want, honey? Okay, so I guess right now in this video, what we'll do is we'll reverse it, kind of show you what we have to do. Can you lift up that apron? Is it heavy? Can you get it? Here we go. Do you see that hook right there? You see that? I know, it's got a little springy thing. Here, let me show you. So we're gonna take this, push up that apron, and just slide that back. Slide that back and it hooks it. All right, you wanna try it again? You wanna do the other? There you go. There, we'll go ahead and flip that around. All right, now I'll get this side, okay? And the reason why I want to keep the handles up is when you go to lift up the apron, it clears. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope this uh, maybe helped you if you're designing your own coop to make a tractor uh, ability to move it around your field, your yard, whatever. Um, and, of course, just also I want to show how we're always trying to innovate, be smarter, solve problems, all that good fun stuff. And... Um, Again, if you ever have any questions, don't ever hesitate to give us a call, 919-794-3989. What's the website? Can you tell them the website? I don't know. You don't know? CarolinaCoops.com. And where else can people find us? What's your favorite? Um, where do you always see Daddy on TV? Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Check us out at YouTube. Subscribe. Leave your questions and comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. All right, you ready to help me push this coop back? All right, let's do it. You ready? All right, let's go. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Good job. So that's a wrap.